Good morning, folks. Just like yesterday, our lineup today is an eyegasm. We've got new planets, plasma nuclei, light echoes, and the center of the galaxy. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and the last day was really starting to look like the final throws of sunspot minimum. Bright active regions, dark coronal holes, but mostly calm thus far as the long 11-year cycle ramps up again slowly. The active regions do not have any sunspots below the bright umbral magnetic fields, which is expected at this stage. As the sunspots return, they will get increasingly large and long-lasting, but it's a process. Yesterday morning, a relatively unexciting coronal plasma filament group bunched and began trying to release on the northwestern limb. Almost like a stealth CME as the coronal release was nearly imperceptible, it was a slow but dense CME, and it's not headed at Earth. Solar wind really quick here to see the peak two days ago in purple plasma speed and the dropout since then. Geomagnetic conditions are calm and quiet with a tamer plasma stream. The top earthquake of the last day hit Papua New Guinea. Yesterday we had reported the Puerto Rico rumble and while the Caribbean is still shaking this morning, the western Pacific has joined in activity including blood echoes at some familiar depths, including a transition zone event we've come to see before Japan goes higher in magnitude. And now we're off because the first ever Earth-sized exoplanet in a habitable zone has been discovered by TESS. It's TOI 700D, and it orbits a star much smaller than the Sun, at a distance much closer than the Earth to the Sun. But with these scaled down sizes, the heat content of the planet should be able to support liquid water across a great deal of it. The graphic here shows how TOI compares to other known systems, including our own up top. Indeed, both the water and the compositional chart for this planet it's falling very close to where Earth falls on those charts. We've got one more from TESS actually, and it's the TOI 1338 system, where there's both a little b and a big B. Folks, this is TESS's first Tatooine-like system. Big A and Big B are the binary stars, while little b is a planet orbiting them both. The smaller star is much dimmer and actually affects the light curve of the brighter star during its transit, but they also noted a smaller dip in there, and a mathematical pattern between them. Folks, this is called resonance, and it happens so often in celestial situations of orbit, it's hard to imagine random chaotic effects of gravity being the culprit, especially when we know an electromagnetic system is going to produce a similar pattern. Folks, we are off to M87, the famous black hole image galaxy. You'll recall yesterday morning we showed you the video where Dr. Robitaille debunked it, but today, we're seeing that there is indeed a galaxy there, along with a galactic plasma nucleus and a cosmic jet. It has indeed easily been visible in radio imagery for years and x-rays, and they have found such a drastic change in the appearance of the jet over just a few years, they say the jet must be relativistic, with particles moving at nearly the speed of light. Speaking of plasma nuclei, not all of those things they refer to as black holes lie at the center of galaxies. In fact, at the pink dots in each galaxy image here, they claim to have discovered a non-centralized plasma nucleus, and you can see their distributions here. And in addition to remembering that the specific math of black holes violates numerous observational and theoretical constructs, I have to admit that some of these pink dots are looking like they are indeed in the dead center of the galaxies, especially those last two. We're going to RS Puppis next for a new look at the famous light echoes. Folks, the gas around this star is not actually moving. The star itself is a peculiar periodic variable with extreme brightness changes, which actually reflect off the dust and gas in different levels as the star varies, creating this concentric light echo moving outward. In the new work, they were able to show the intensity of the concentric shells of the light echo as it emanates and expands, showing it's probably not like a clean sine wave. This paper and all the links we see in these morning shows are found below the video in the description box. Quick note as a new global cosmic strings animation comes with a paper probing axions in a quantum chromodynamically controlled universe. While they can't find axions and are unlikely to do so, they are surging in popularity among dark matter searchers due to their ease in correcting the conflicts. They want axions which would have a small electric charge, which is totally cheating when it comes to dark matter and would mean it's actually real normal matter, but also that charge is in fact what is missing in the cosmos. And those who have seen the Plasma Cosmology movie or are familiar with the copycat electric theories already know it's the charge we're looking for. Last but not least, folks, one last piece of beauty. 
This one from Sophia, and folks, it's about time her infrared capabilities got showcased. She's been using her radio views to revolutionize magnetic field importance to astrophysical situations, but now it joins Herschel and Spitzer as having mapped the interior of the galaxy in infrared. Unlike those previous attempts, Sophia does a bit better job piercing the veil of the photoionized dust and gases, getting into the meat of the large structure hiding behind the wispy clouds, much of which is more wispy clouds. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, tomorrow we will release part four of the Solar Plasma Climate Forcing series. This one is on the oceans. Definitely catch up on the first three if you missed them. They are linked below. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.